ReZero episode seven of season two and or I believe episode 32 of season two. Um, the, once again, we got to see some of, you know, what ReZero is best at. The Beatrice scene to, of course, the ending scene where we get those after credit scenes. Always make sure you guys watch to the end of the episode. There are a lot of after credit scenes that you guys may be missing and are very valuable because they really connect these episodes, essentially. So I'll tell you what. Looking at this episode in the beginning of this episode, I want to make sure I do highlight this. The way they use the music in this season two was a little bit different, we saw, than compared to season one. The very first uh, scene with Beatrice, for instance, that music that they used there, I really liked that. It was a, I thought it was a bold pick, but I thought it nailed what they're trying to do there. And it just kind of nailed the atmosphere of Beatrice's room for whatever reason. So... Here's where things get, well, pretty much interesting, though, when we're looking at this, this show and our story. <sighs> okay. So, looking at what's going on with Beatrice and, of course, Subaru, the biggest issue w with this whole thing is the fact that Beatrice is someone that you, can't, you really can't tell. Like, she may care for Su Subaru, but yet you can't, you know, decipher whether she's doing it from because of the book said so or not. Maybe she cares, but maybe she doesn't care enough. You even saw whenever, well, of course, uh, the bow hunter, I can't remember her name, Elsa, well, came into the room and finished to bar off. You did notice that she had that very sad look on her face. That was kind of supposed to be one of the subtextual kind of things going on, going on with this episode. And whenever I say subtextual, I'm referring to indirect messaging, something that's not necessarily said directly. Maybe it's said through words, but those words where still don't directly, you know, just come out and say what they're feeling. And Beatrice is someone that is most definitely following the book. She even said mother is the only one that that matters. Mother referring to Satella. She has to be referring to Satella, at least from what we know. Because you got to think about it. Which is cool. Who is mother? Well, I would assume mother is Satella. But there could also have been one of, you know, one of the witches of greed. Excuse me, not witches of greed, but one of the archbishop sins that created her. So maybe it's a girl. Maybe that's who mother is. I don't know. So also, I do want to go over Subaru's reaction. That's the worst Subaru, Subaru reaction we've had in a minute, right? And I've always asked the question, what would you do if that rock was gone? What if Rim is just gone? And whenever you see that, you know, Subaru gets told Rim is gone, and even just prior to being told that by Beatrice, well, you see the reaction of Subaru. He's freaking the F out. He, he, he just... Rim is the one who's, who's gotten him to where he is. And you could even say Amelia, if, of course, if it sometimes it's Amelia, he's just going AWOL, he's going MIA, he's going crazy, everything. But nonetheless, if you see what happens to Rim, Rim is the foundation, though. You know, Amelia may be the building that Subaru sees, but nonetheless, Rim is the foundation of Subaru's composure. That's that's true. That is very, very, very true. If something happens to her, it's, it's done so. Her and Rim, Rim and Amelia are absolutely not expendable. We know that. From a mental from a mental aspect, Subaru cannot handle that. Of course, we need Amelia here anyways because that's the whole point of this. But looking at how Subaru freaked out, do I blame him? Do I degrade him? No, I do not degrade him. Uh, it, how much composure do you expect this guy to to keep but then we see him bounce back in the next episode and that that leads me to this you know you got me taipei nagasuki you got the people watching in the audience as well and the reason why you got us was because of this simple thing it's the fact that you were aware enough to make you know subaru's calm cool collectiveness really go hand in hand with his evaluation process but even odo kind of says it just because you're calm doesn't mean you're thinking rationally you could even slow your mind down but still be kind of thinking irrationally i mean and i never really thought about that and that's so true there's times where like i've been really like even when i get angry like I really do calm myself uh, down sometimes it doesn't happen a lot but sometimes when I do and you know, I've been working on this I've noticed that sometimes I still make kind of stupid decisions frustration can still be there even whenever you cool down and if there's the fresh you know just, all you need is the right amount of frustration in order to make the make the dots not connect you need something like just like that internet connection per se if you get a ping you hit some lag it doesn't matter how strong it is it's gonna mess with your internet for a second it's gonna mess with the gameplay it's gonna mess with the thought process process if you catch my analogy so that's something that's very very true and i just didn't think about that and taipei 
you got me. I like you're right. There is more. There's more that comes to calmness, and you know, calmness does not necessarily just equate to rational thinking. I think it's the biggest step. But there are, there's a little bit more there. You got to be emotional, emotionally. Like you got to think about that. You know, including it's not just about am I frustrated. Am I thinking irrationally? Am I calm? Heck, there's some people that have a sense of urgency that are calm, but they do allow that kind of, you know, that sense of urgency and or adrenaline to be there. They just kind of bring the two together because if you don't have a sense of urgency, you may be too calm for the situation at hand. That's an interesting kind of gesture there made by the author. But at the other, on the other end of the spectrum, we find out Frederica's not a full, full blood demon or, and or a half blood, and anything below a half blood can go in and out of the barrier as they please. Just because you have blood in you from some kind of you know demi human and or beast, I guess, does not make you susceptible, you know, susceptible to not being able to leave the barrier. So anything under fifty percent, as we find out, Frederica, Frederica's mother's full human and a half demon and or demi human i guess well had a child well that means she's a quarter so now looking at that that's interesting because now why did frederica leave what was her reason to leave her brother behind especially her younger one i mean she seems like a very nice genuine person especially after all the elsa stuff i we know that she's working with roswell i don't even think she knows roswell's grand scheme because i'm still underneath the impression that roswell is the reason elsa's there one it has to be human one it has to be someone who knew how to get into connections with someone like her and roswell fits the bill so i mean who else human otto but Otto's been a merchant his whole life. I'm sure he's, I mean, and we just had this episode. I mean, and we'll get into that in a second. But, uh, I mean, we just had this episode. So you got to think about that as well. It has to be a human person. It's not someone who's a demi-human because people inside the bear haven't been able to leave. So it's not a demi-human. That leaves people like, I mean, Rim's only a half demon, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Rim and Ram would only be half demons. Obviously, it's not Ram. It's not Ram. It's not Garfield. It's not Ryuzu. It's not Amelia. Otto is the only other human along with Roswell that's within the barrier that could have this, you know, have, have the capability, of, one, even doing this, two, even planning this. Otto, I'm sure, did not know he was going to the sanctuary, and I'm sure he did not know which day Subaru was going to return home. Roswell's someone who knows Subaru's habits. Roswell's the one who's talking to Subaru about these questions. Roswell's the one who's already stated that he's been orchestrating all this stuff. He could be coming out now to say that to finish orchestrating the rest of it. Because whenever you really look at it, once again, one, it's not a human. Two, Roswell's the only one that has the in-depth of mind to do this. And three, Roswell's the only one that knows Subaru's habits. habits. So, And he, he's the one who's talked to Subaru about this stuff, which originally made Subaru go back to the mansion. It has to be Roswell. Is Roswell a bad person? He's sketchy as shit. Is, is Roswell evil? I, I think partially. It's, I, I think he has no morals. I think everything is a means to an end. But one thing that has me confused about Roswell, once again, like I've stated in the last few episodes, is this. Roswell, what's your reasoning for believing in Sub Subaru? Like, why? Why do you believe in Subaru? Like, I don't understand. There's no plausible reason. Um, well, I shouldn't say possible. Oh, well, yeah, I should. There is no possible reason why you should believe Subaru, like, would a not be, I mean, would be able to get through any of this unless he knows that Subaru can return by well death. They, why would he believe in the weakest dude that's just an ordinary human with no powers? Why? Why would he believe a regular human being could go up against a witch's cult? Why would he believe Subaru could bring people together when all he did was, well, make a fool of himself at the the castle? I mean, during the, the selection, royal selection meeting, that's the last thing. Yeah, think about it. That's when I'll, whenever Roswell's plans would have went into motion. He didn't know him enough yet. He didn't. It just does not make sense unless he knows something about Subaru that Subaru doesn't. Why would he have faith in Subaru? It does not make sense that conversation was a con contradicted itself. Because Subaru was someone that, that didn't show that you should believe in him. He didn't have any powers. He had no reason to believe that Subaru could beat the witch's cult whenever even some of the strongest people can. not It doesn't make sense. But uh, moving on to the next issue here with Garfield. So we finally find out that Garfield's issue with Subaru was actually due to his miasma. His, him smelling like the witch. And yeah, something that we probably kind of all forgot for a second. But uh, yeah, he is a beast. And he probably has a strong scent, hence that he's probably going to track down Ram and Otto and all of them just before they leave the barrier because of that said scent he's probably able to trace, even though they have such a great head start on Garfield already. So, also, though, looking at, uh, 
what's going on here with the whole Garfield thing. Him, Subaru and Etchina, of course, that connection probably really brought out brought out a lot of miasma from Subaru to make it smell that way. And then Subaru trying to take hand, you know, take hold on the uh well, the trials is just something that they don't like. It's sketchy. You have a sketchy scent to you, and now you're trying to do sketchy things. I think at the end of the day, Subaru does need to take the trials. I think he just needs to go and do it. I think this more Subaru needs to learn about himself. There's three trials, and the first one's supposed to be the easiest, and Amelia can't even get past the first one, let alone her second and third. So it makes you makes me lead, you know, leave to. It makes me. Um, it leads me to believe that the next two trials are something that Subaru would probably have an extreme, extremely hard time getting over. If one was his parents, something else has to be his connection with him and Amelia. There, like, there has to be some kind of, like, there's, like, the next step of taking a step back and truly allowing her to be independent, which is, it's so tough because in a fictional setting, he Subaru has to be a little bit more perfect in this sense because Amelia is someone who's show, so broken, Amelia is a shattered person, destroyed person. I mean, you can tell clearly by the way she acts, by the way she carries herself, by the way she she's self-conscious about how people view her, and also by the way she reacts to her first trial. That's not even the two. So that means Amelia's pain is far severe than Subaru's. You got to think about that as well. But uh, other than that, the whole friends scene with Ado at the end, I thought that was really cool. You got to think about it. Ado and Subaru have been through so damn much with one another. Like, absolutely a stupid amount of stuff they've been through with one another. And, I mean, he's seen the worst of Ado. He's seen the greed of Ado. We saw the greed of Ado again, but we saw Ado be greedy and have a moral compass. So, win-win. Nonetheless, though, we see him pushing out of the wagon with the uh, white whale. We see him get scared uh, in that wagon at the same time and try to put it well and push Subaru out because he wanted to live. And he's like, well, he's after you. Why should I meet my demise for you? But then we saw, you know, through all this Subaru, treat out all right, them get through things together, them work together. And of course, that for friendship finally formed. So that genuineness, they finally, you know, were able to connect on. And Subaru has a lot of reasons not to believe that you know, Ido is his friend or liked him. I mean, it makes sense. So <laughs> it made a lot of sense why they are business partners rather than friends, but it's cool to see that. And Subaru even cries a little bit. And to me, I thought that was a little bit of subtext that he was extremely excited to actually like have someone who was his friend just because he's his friend. He's not part of the mansion. He's not part of Amelia's group and or entourage. He's just an independent dude doing his own thing. And Subaru just decided to hop in and or jump in on that. And I really like that. So, yeah. But other than that, though, guys, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow on Twitter X25. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys.